Hi! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Angie. It's nice to have you guys here today. At long last, I have my second Scrivener video. So a few years ago, I did my first Scrivener video, which has grown to become my most popular video on this channel. And I still get views on it and comments on it every week. I love that that has helped so many people. That video has a very academic focus. I go over how I set up my Scrivener binder for my PhD dissertation. At the time, there really weren't a lot of Scrivener videos for academics. Most of the Scrivener videos were for creative writers who are working on novels. There really wasn't a lot for how to set up Scrivener for like a PhD dissertation. When I first started using Scrivener, I just completely kind of clicked and tested and played around with things until I figured out how I wanted it to be set up. And I still really recommend that. There's a lot that you can learn just by giving yourself a couple hours, maybe put a movie on in the background, and just play around. Click through all the options on the menu, just kind of create a dummy file, and that way if you accidentally delete something or make a mistake, it doesn't really matter, and just learn how it works. The developers, Literature and Latte, also have a fantastic YouTube channel of their own that go into detail on all the individual features. So if there's anything that I go over too quickly in this, you can absolutely ask me a question in the comments, but I would really recommend the Literature and Latte YouTube channel. This video is going to be a little bit different from my first Scrivener video. I'm just going to kind of go through things how I set up my Scrivener binder for a new creative writing project. So this video will have a creative writing focus, but I will say some of the content might not be that different because I, I set up the binder side of things a little bit differently. And I've also learned some new things that Scrivener can do since I was doing my dissertation. So there are some things that I do now that I didn't do then, but a lot of what I did is still the same. So even if you're focusing on creative writing, I would still recommend watching the academic Scrivener video because it's really not that different. I think the problem a lot of academics have had, myself included, was seeing how the advice for creative writers translated for academic projects and it wasn't until I really got into playing with it that I realized it's really not that different but there are some differences there are some things I do now with my not my binders for my novels that are more focused on getting me into the mood to write and also helping with the different writing process of creative writing versus academic writing so I'm gonna get my screen recording going so that you can see what I'm doing but I'm just gonna walk you step by step. This is exactly how I set up a new binder for a new project. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so here we go. So I have my old Scrivener file. So the reason I'm filming this video is because I have just launched the Bookshop of Possibilities, which is book one in my independent heart series. And so it is now time to start working on book Two. So I thought since I need to set up my binder for book two, I may as well film it and show you guys how I do it. This is a perfect time to do that. So this is the old binder. So first I'm going to go and create a new project. I'm going to go to fiction and now it's going to open up this file. So one thing you might see is, wow, the background looks really cool, Andrea. How do you do that? I will show you in a little bit, but for now, we're gonna switch it back to kind of the default theme. Default is there. So when you open up your Scrivener binder, this is probably what it's going to look like. You're gonna have all of these menu options on the side. It's gonna tell you a bit about the template. You're going to have your manuscript file and then chapter and scenes. So this is the default. Now there are two different ways you can approach this. You can have a folder per chapter with different text files Per scene, per scene in each chapter. Or what I do, as you can see here in my old file, is I have one manuscript folder. If we go back to here, one manuscript folder, there they all are. Um, and then each chapter or section, so the title page is a text file, the copyright page, prologue, all of the different chapters down to epilogue. I like to do it this that way, where everything is 
in a different chapter text file rather than all the folders. I just find that having a folder per chapter gets a little bit clunky and it's not really my favorite way to do this. So I'm going to move this scene out of the folder so that I can then move the folder to trash. So I'm going to rename this prologue. I'm not entirely sure if book two is going to have a prologue, but I'm gonna create one just in case. Now to create more of these, you can go up here to the green plus sign. If you hold it down a bit, you get the option for a new text or a new folder or a new character sketch or setting sketch. So I'm just gonna do a bunch of new text files. I'm gonna rename all of these, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, And I'm gonna look at my old copy of the book. How many chapters? There's chapter 20 and then the epilogue. Yeah, so chapter 20 and an epilogue. I tend to follow the same chapter format per book. I can always add a chapter later as I'm writing. That's not difficult. So now I've got all of my chapter files. Now, here's the next thing, and this is where having old folder open really helps. Okay, so in my old book, I have a lot of research. I have stuff that's for admin, so like my beta disclaimer, I've got a timeline, I've got cut text, so I don't need all of these, but I definitely want the characters. And so if I right click on characters and go to copy project, independent hearts book two, I can then highlight characters here and now it should, yep, have copied all of them over. So this is great <laughs> because this means I don't have to individually copy and paste everyone. Now this has all the characters from book one, so the order of importance is going to be a little bit different, but like my master character list, that I wanna keep. I don't wanna lose that because that's not changing. The current residents of the town of Olsenburg are all gonna stay the same. But as you can see, Catherine and Josh right here, they're not gonna be the main characters. They're gonna kind of take a back seat. I've got some blank character sketches that never got filled out with book one. I've got my name bank, which is just a random list of names. So this is all stuff I definitely want to copy over. I wanna do the same thing with places. So I'm gonna go back to the old binder. I right click, copy to project, and we're gonna put all of the places into places of the new binder. So there they all are. That's great. And then what else do I want to copy over? Probably the series outline. Um, we'll put that in research. And then I think that's good. So to show you how I create some of these if you're starting from scratch, I'm just rearranging my research binder. So the research folder here, I like to have that be the master. Come on, move. Okay, it's not letting me move it. We're gonna put characters into research and places into research. And we're gonna move front matter down because that's less important to me. Sample output can be closed because that's less important. Move up series outline. Notes needs to go into research. I like to have, if I move this over, I like to kind of make my binders match a bit. So I'm actually going to move the series outline here um, and move that to trash. So with the research binder highlighted, so everything will be added into the research binder, I'm gonna add a new text file. This will be my notes, or um, we'll say rough notes. Put that up at the top. And then if I right click, change icon, I can change what it looks like. So we can do, do a yellow one there. Series outline got places and characters. 
I'm gonna move this around because it kind of went into a character. We've got a we've got folders and folders, so I'm kind of taking care of that. So you can move anything to trash that you want, and then you just go into trash, and you can see everything you've moved there. So if you put something in trash that you don't want. Um, you can either delete it for good or add it back, move it somewhere. So I rarely ever empty that trash. I just leave it. And then if I need to get something out of there, I can. So I definitely want to do a, another timeline because those are really helpful. We'll give that the calendar icon move that up next to rough notes. So timeline is so I can keep track of time continuity in the book. So if chapter one takes place in this month and chapter two takes place a couple weeks later, I can mark that down and just have a kind of list of all the dates of the book or like dates and seasons and months that are mentioned. So it helps me keep track of continuity, which is really important. Then I want to create a book outline. So I've got my series outline and I've got my book outline. And I'm going to give this the outline icon. So when I start outlining a book, I will usually start in this text file. And I will just write down any notes, ideas, typically things that are in my project notebook. I'll copy and paste over what I've already written in my notes app on my laptop and I'll start kind of in this one page and then I'll move on to my formal outlining process, which will be an upcoming video. <laughs> I will do a video on how I outline and super outline. So then I want to create a to-do. I like to have those in Scrivener just so that if I'm thinking of things while I'm working in Scrivener, I don't always want to have to then close out of Scrivener or leave my Scrivener window. Sometimes it's nice to just stay completely in Scrivener and not open up a different program or app on my laptop. So I like to be able to have everything I could possibly need. And then I'm going to create a questions, if I can spell that right, questions to answer. And we'll give that question mark icon. And so this is where I will sometimes put things that pop up. So if a character does something and I'm wondering like what's their motivation for doing that but I I need time to think about it. I'll put questions in there in this section so that again I'm not leaving Scrivener, I'm not going to a different program, I can kind of keep my hands on the keyboard and keep in that writing mode but I'm not losing any question or idea. If there's something I want to research about a town or the way something is made or something that will add that level of detail to the book, I can write that down in this section. Oh, and then cut text. That's the other thing we need to create. This is important. And I'm going to give that scissors. I think we've got everything. Okay, so for the cut text, this is something I do primarily when I'm editing. And this is one of the reasons why I am okay with actually cutting things from the book, because I'm not cutting it completely. So this is where all the director's cut type stuff gets put. So when I'm editing, if I decide mm, this paragraph or this set of dialogue or this particular scene just isn't really doing anything, I don't think it's going to serve the final version of the book. I can cut it from the main document and paste it down into here. And then I'll just separate it out by saying, okay, this is chapter one. And then I'll copy and paste the cut text into there so that I know what chapter it's come from. If I want to put it back, I can, but it lets me kind of get rid of stuff without completely getting rid of stuff, if that makes sense. So that's pretty much how I set up the binder side of things, but we're not completely done setting everything up. Now I'm going to show you how I make it look pretty. <laughs> so if you're up in file, the file option, and scroll down, or no, it's in Scrivener. So if you go to Scrivener, to the drop down, and then you'll see theme. There's a few themes that Scrivener comes with, but you can also import themes, or I will show you how you can make your own. So we started with the theme that I've titled Kimbrel's Books. So this is the theme that I used for uh, book one. 
of the book sh of the independent art series and this is my bookshop of possibilities theme so i've titled it after the location of that book which is kimbrell's books so to change these things you go to scrivener and then preferences from here you can change almost anything you can think of and it's the coolest thing we're gonna go to appearance we're just gonna start working down through things so this is the changing the binder so right now it's set for American typewriter I think I want to go with something still a bit old-fashioned but let's maybe try Baskerville so that's changed the font here um, if you look over at the menu here that's changing it to big caslon and then we'll change back to baskerville so i think we'll stick with baskerville for this book series you can also change the font size you can change the font color or not the font color but the background color so i think i want to give a different background color for this series let's maybe go with like a nice rich orange I think that's actually really pretty so now that's set and then if we go to cork board um, there's a whole bunch of things that you can change change the index card let's also go with maybe something a little bit more peachy and then inspector and notes we will go with something fairly pale for that main editor media background okay so this is where um, you can change the background so I'm clicking uh, change texture and then I've just grabbed a, a photo off of a Google image search so you can add anything you want and then it's just going to tile it so now we've got these kind of pretty fall leaves so i'm not going to go through everything <laughs> you can tweak because you literally can like change so much and this is why i recommend creating a dummy file before you set up your main folder because you can just go through here and see what everything does what everything changes and change all of that and then when you're done so you go to manage you go to save theme and then we'll call this one YouTube test because I will probably keep tweaking this and then this will tell you all, everything you want to save within this theme um, so we're gonna do pretty much all of it so that'll save it and so then when you come back up here to theme you can see it here so I can go back to Kimbrel's books loads up that theme go back to theme we'll choose the one we just created and now it goes back to that you can also save theme to file or load theme from file and so this lets you save it as a file that you could then send to a friend they could um, use the same theme or if you find someone who's created a theme that you really like and they've made that file available so that's how you would load those in what I've liked doing is I have themes for my different books you saw the Kimbrels spring bloom this has been my across the pond theme so very different vibe but fits the vibe of that book series so it's kind of nice that you can switch things with just a click of a button if you're like me and you're working on multiple projects at once and you like to have just a different visual setup for each project this allows you to do that now the last thing to do that is important to talk about is project targets so I'm going to come up to project scroll down to project targets open up this so this is something that I get questions on all the time when I'm writing and I share on Instagram what my word count for the day was how close I'm getting to my goal that sort of thing so this is where the magic happens this has been a game changer for productivity and daily writing and meeting my daily writing goals in my creative writing projects so the first thing I do is I set my total project manuscript target I typically aim for this particular series I think I was aiming originally for 90,000 I think it ended up being over 95 was the rough draft so I'm gonna set 95,000 words my rough draft and now I'm gonna come to options I'm going to set a deadline of definitely in 2022 but I think 
I'm gonna outline September, October, November, write December, January, February. So let's for now just say February 28th and switch over to session target. It's gonna reset at midnight every day. I'm not gonna allow text anywhere. I'm only going to allow text written in the manuscript, but I am gonna automatically calculate from deadline and I'm going to set Monday through Friday as my writing days. So um, if I go back to the deadline, so this is when I'm going to finish writing the first draft. So this will count between now and the end of February, everything I write in my outline and everything I write in the first draft. And so now when I click this button, <laughs> I have to write 760 words every day to meet this goal by the end of February. Now this will probably get changed. I can extend my deadline out to March. Um, so like if I do that, let's say 328, it brings me down to 655. So what I always recommend is know how much time you have. Know what a realistic end goal is. Know how many words you think you can commit to working on your project every day. And just keep tweaking your deadline or how many days you write or things like that until you get to a number you know you can do. The nice thing about this feature is if you do, so if my goal is six, 655 words a day if there's a day where I write more my goal my daily goal will go down if there's a day where I write less my daily word goal will go up it will automatically recalculate based on how many words are left to get to my project goal and how many days are left to write this is also why I set Monday through Friday as writing days. That way I have the weekends to catch up or get ahead depending on what I'm trying to do. Now the nice thing is as well, you can either leave this box open as you're working and then as you write something, be the prologue, you see the words starting to um, accrue, but you will also see it up here if you hover over the search bar at the top. Um, you can either click in here to search something or if you hover, it will show you how close you are to your project goal and how close you are to your daily goal. But I like to leave it open so I can see this fill up as I write. So I think that's everything. That's certainly the basics of what I do, how I set up my binder. A lot of people I've noticed when I talk to them about Scrivener, if they've never used it, they can get really intimidated <laughs> by Scrivener. It can look really kind of big and impressive and intimidating with so many features and they don't know how to use everything. And you know, there's so many features I haven't looked at that I will probably address in the outlining video, particularly the snapshots, taking snapshots of your work. I don't even use the f snapshots feature to its full potential. So I've been using Scrivener for years and I'm still learning. Like I only just in this last year learned about the whole themes thing and how you can just make your Scrivener binder look so incredible and have a theme that perfectly matches your project and just adds to the inspiration. Like it's great. And I've only just learned that. So uh, my biggest advice for Scrivener literally is to just start playing with it. Just dive in, play around with it. You can create just a very basic file, basic binder that you start working on your project in, but then I really recommend creating a kind of sandbox developmental binder that's just for playing around in. That's just for testing out all the different features and seeing what everything can do and what everything looks like and how it all works. But I did want to do a video since I needed to create this binder on how I create and set up a binder for a new project. It's kind of the setup that I've been using for all of my projects and it's kind of just what has worked best for me. But ultimately, how I arrange my research folder might be different from how you want to arrange yours. How I set up my manuscript as just a series of text files per chapter. Um, some people per might prefer to have a folder per chapter with a different text file per scene. If your novel deals with parts, if you've got part one, part two, part three, then that's going to change how you maybe set things up. Tutorials 
tutorials and videos like this one are great and can be really helpful, but ultimately Scrivener is a program that you just have to dive in and start using and see what works best for you. So use advice and tutorials like this one as a jumping off point, but do not be afraid to just then throw all of my advice out the window and do whatever the heck you want, because it really is something that you can tailor to your exact specifications and your exact needs. And that's one of the biggest things I love about this program. That's gonna wrap this up. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really, really appreciate that. It does help um, the video pop up in searches and get recommended. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. There will be more writing videos, more behind the scenes vlogs of me writing my books and just my life in general as an indie author. And yeah, let me know in the comments. Do you use Scrivener? Do you not use Scrivener? Have you been afraid to use Scrivener? I would love to know. And I would recommend going and checking out the other other Scrivener video I have. I will try to link that somewhere because I go over some of the same stuff, but there, I think there's some things that I didn't go over in this one that I did go over in that one. But yeah, it's just my love for this program knows no end. Every time I think I've learned everything there is to learn, I learn something new. And I love that about this program. So let me know if you use Scrivener. I'd really love to know. And yeah, I will see you all very soon in the next video. Thank you very much for watching this one.